Uh-oh. What's up, babe? I go to pot still whiskey. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome to the Mold Chronicles where my lovely selves and uh, these two ninjas right mm -hmm. here are trying some new whiskies new whiskies but more important having fun with them mm -hmm. today was a very interesting blind tasting uh, okay. so uh, grab the popcorn focus on the faces it's gonna get funny uh, uh -oh. David I want you to count to three can you count to three David one seven Two, three. <laughs> One, two, three. three. Four. Whoa! Glenn no. Finnick, Excellent Range, number four. Jesus. Now, no. we oh, hey. didn't expect it. Oh, I wasn't expecting that at all. Um, ah. As I said, popcorn, ah. as yeah. the blind tasting was ah. a bit experimental as well. Yeah, it was. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you in a moment. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm a little bit worried right now. Like this, this is what wow, intense. Yeah. Right that. It's very light. I don't know. It's very light. Uh, wow. It's very floral, sweet, fruity. It's more fruity. There's slight bitterness just just here. Uh, raisins or sultanas. But then there's that, that the slightly cheesier sort of element. It's like Nuts and fruit. Yeah, a little bit of cheese on the nice. Mm. Is it certain Cadbury's chocolate? A little acidic notes. How much I sure about? This cheddar cheese, like it's really... I've had all these delicious sweets. Hot still whiskey I had one time. You've never had cheddar. On the nose? Yeah, I'd definitely say Irish. On the palate. There's a little in spice. Spicy as vanilla. Nutmeg. Brown bread. Vanilla and spice. Strawberry jam. <laughs> oh, I don't know what it is. It does remind me of going to the sweet shop. It's, it's this fruity spiciness. Great finish, great finish. Wow. It doesn't disappear straight away. It feels a little tingle on the tongue. This is elegant. That's a symphony. There's no aggression to it. That's really soft, easy drinking. Pot still knows that it gives me. Single malt. I think I'm going to stick to Ireland. It's a Scotch. It's definitely a Scotch whiskey. Uh, I think it's from the space side. I happily part with 50 pounds to sit and drink this. Around about 50, 50 plus. I would score it at three and a half stars. A nice little four stars for me. It's gorgeous. Have likey. <laughs> okay. Pot still whiskey, yes, David. <laughs> this is the best damn pot still whiskey I've ever tasted. <laughs> so, Glenfiddich mm -hmm. Fire and Cane, experiment number four. Nice. It's a uh, part of a range. Uh, uh, number one was IPA, number two mm -hmm. was. Uh, uh, was Kiss Kiss? Project 20. Project 20. We call it Kiss Kiss. Kiss. Number three, David. Uh, Winter Storm. Winter, Winter Storm. Storm. We actually have them somewhere in the back if you want to pop the things. Yeah. Now, uh, Glenfiddich, Fire and Cane, we got, we got, which got, uh, Winter Storm. presume for now. Fire as smoke and Cane as sweet. Wrong finish in this case. Mm -hmm. So we have 43% um, ABV. 43, nice. Bourbon okay. matured. Mm -hmm. Finished in rum barrels. Rum barrels, okay. Uh, priced at around 45 pounds. 45 pounds? So this is their newest entry, which was just launched in UK. Now, uh, the whole range, I think initially they plan it as... Uh, we've been to the distillery, we've asked some questions. We, we, we were nosing around in there to look, but what's interesting? Uh, so the initial uh, plan is have seven. So this year we're getting number four. We don't know so three more. Three more at least. Ooh, okay. We don't know very when they are coming. In well, so, yeah, no, it's uh, very interesting. Definitely on the, the, the taste. It was, it was crazy because I, I'm not getting the peat. I'm, I'm still not, I'm not getting the peat at all. I, like, it's, it's crazy. I called it Irish whiskey. So, <laughs> like, definitely not getting... Well, this is the thing. They say it's 
lightly pitted. Lightly pitted, okay. Okay, they don't say it's a heavily pitted or a pitted whiskey, they mm. say a lightly pitted. Okay. That's why it's fire and mm. it's not smoke, it's fire and cane, you know, mm. just, just a bit of, of fire. Just, just a, a kiss, just a, a kiss. kiss of fire. But mm. I'm uh, happy you brought the it's not pity fact mm -hmm. as it's a glenfiddich. Mm -hmm. Normally with glenfiddich we don't really associate smoky pitted whiskies. Mm. But funny thing, go for it. Initially when the distillery was opened mm -hmm. in 1887 yep. by William Grant, the first spirit that ran through the stills was pitted. Yep. I have heard that. And yep. the story goes that mm -hmm. his wife Elizabeth didn't quite like the pitted smoky flavors yeah. and uh, at some point because William did respect his wife yeah. Yeah. he got rid it's of yeah. the pitted whiskey <laughs> and um, by the beginning of the 2000s I think a lot of distilleries they were looking into what's trending yeah. what's, what's in the future there for whiskeys and a lot of distilleries realized it's pitted whiskey, the yep, demand on, on, on smoky whiskies yep. was growing and uh, in 2003 I think they uh, released uh, the first smoky version from a Glenfiddich, it was called Glenfiddich Kuran, Kuran. 12 years old Ooh. and uh, if I'm not mistaken that was finished in an Isla cask as oh. they did not have okay. yet mature pitted whiskey mm -hmm. then in um, 2012, at their 125th anniversary, uh, they had the, the uh, anniversary one, the anniversary one yeah. which had a small proportion of pitted malt. Mm -hmm. That's why it was a non-age statement. And then in 2014, we have got the you got it right there. Yeah, I've got it right there. Got the vintage cask, the vintage cask, which is Ooh. the smokiest Ooh. release from Glenfiddich. So if you think this is smoky, this is going to be four times oh, yeah. smokier. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And soon we will hopefully see more pitted releases from this yeah. distillery as uh, this is their fourth introduction uh, to pitted malt. And um, I found in a book uh, called Whiskeypedia uh, where they say that the actual pit is coming from Tomintau. Tomintau? Okay. Who knows? Okay. Who That's knows? interesting. So they they actually outsourcing the pitted barley to, to, to make this. Yeah, they if if you see the um, uh, the kilns at the distillery, mm -hmm. they are just for sure. show for architecture uh, design reasons. Mm -hmm. As they used to be um, uh, working back in the days. Yeah. Now they are turned into a restaurant. We have been in that restaurant. <laughs> yeah. uh, we will attach some pictures to that. On this one. Okay. While you are brewing that, uh, I'm gonna uh, talk a bit about the rum as it's a rum finish. Mm -hmm. We don't normally see rum finishes in whiskies as much. Uh, rum is one of our favorites. I still have some. Okay. It's uh, one of our favorite finishes. Uh, uh, you get the Glenfinnick 21 up there, which mm -hmm. is finished in a rum cask. Yes, it is. But this is a different style of rum. As the rum in this one was, they say, too gentle, too soft, mm -hmm. too elegant for the slightly pitted character it had. So it wasn't resisting, it was getting lost in the, in the pit. So they decided to look for another type of rum, which they um, associate with a more Latin, Latin style. Latin, 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 style. Latin. Sorry, I'm Latin. from East Europe. So. Latin style. Now, uh, what they actually do is why we don't see that many rum finishes. Because it's quite expensive mm -hmm. to get those barrels, one. Two, it's very difficult to get the consistency of barrels. So, for example, if you launch a whiskey and you want it to be consistent all the time, to have the same sort of finish, mm -hmm. but the barrels you are receiving are way different. Yeah. So what William Grants uh, uh, did, they actually went to the extent of buying the rum. Wow, okay. So they're buying the rum sourced from different distilleries all over Caribbean yeah. and Latin America. They bring the rum to Scotland, they keep it in barrels for about minimum I think it's four months and then with this season barrels which are American oak by the way they finish their whiskies they do that for about four years mm. and then they sell the rum back as it's aged rum now 
so it's actually quite convenient and very interesting in terms of logistics. Now, with the 21 years old, they have ROMs like Demerara ROM, so we can mention Trinidad, maybe Tobago, um, yeah. Guyana. Guyana. In here, we have more uh, Latin countries, so yeah. the percentage of ROM that goes in here is coming more from the Latin America. Latino. Hey, Latino ROMs. Latino. Latinos. Wow. If you want to ask me a question, I can please, see in Britain. Please, please, please. I mean, the question, the, the, the question I'm asking is, yeah, I feel like something's missing here. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> no. yeah. Is, is there a box? <laughs> yeah. Same question I've asked at the distillery when yeah. they introduced the whiskey and I said, well, uh, where's the box? Uh, can I see the box? And they said, well, there's, there's no box. <laughs> it's like, why there's no box? It's not practical. I have heard this. Uh, apparently, cool. they are trying to support uh, the environment. Mm -hmm. by not uh, making uh, the boxes as um, it's quite difficult to recycle them and uh, it's actually a good step towards the future yeah, for a new way of thinking so hence them for that yeah. um, plus friendly to the environment another thing they said well the bottle is beautiful on its own why do you need this box? <laughs> it's a gorgeous bottle I love the uh, orange and the, the contrasting uh, color light Look at that beautiful. Yeah, it's going from, from like Make sure the lid was on. Make sure the lid was on. The light to the dark, the, the dark light. to the light. Yes, oh gorgeous. Gosh. Smoky to sweet. <laughs> smoky to sweet. And do you know what? Just on that smoky note, um, now it's been in the glass for a while because obviously it's been sitting there. Um, that peat um, note is definitely coming up more on the palate, but still on the nose. I'm not, I'm not getting that peaty. That, that, yeah. that, that um, sort yeah. of heavy peat. More sweet potatoes on the nose. Sweet potatoes? Yeah. Interesting, man. Sweet potatoes on the nose. Okay. And... You're getting that earthy peat character come through, mm -hmm. but not so much that smoky, sort of like really heavy, briny sort of peat you're getting. Earth is. It's, it's more sort of like a dirt style of peat. Mm -hmm. So not medicinal. Not like, medicinal. Not like like a uh, TPC? Describe the whiskey to me in three words. What do you get? Um, so with the whiskey, uh, I'm getting lovely like uh, sweet notes coming through. Like like I said earlier, it is almost like um, there's a toasted note in there, like a brown toasted uh, bread uh, with some jam on it. It's uh, very jammy. It's, it's got a nice like jammy sweetness uh, and a lovely lingering finish that just goes nicely down. I wouldn't say it's like a really long finish, but it's like it's a nice finish. It's like a medium sort of finish to it. Cool. How many was that? Seven. Seven. That was quite <laughs> a few words. <laughs> yeah. If um, I would describe it, I would say three words. Go. Sticky toffee pudding, yeah. burnt toast. Okay. I agree with you on that. Yeah. And you mentioned on the blind tasting strawberry jam. Yeah. Jammy. Like it's very jammy, but mm -hmm. the strawberry, the sweet nose that comes with that. Mm -hmm. By the way, experimental. They they started what two years ago. Two, uh, about two, two, two years, two, two and a half years, years two, two, two years, one and a half years. You know what yeah. I like about uh, Glenn Fiddick and uh, William Grant? They like to push the envelope mm -hmm. in terms of innovations. Yep. And um, funny, because after that, uh, I've just read an article that Macallan is going to release a range of experimental whiskies. That's interesting. Uh, Glenn Moray is going to release a range of experimental whiskies. One, of them, one of them is a cider cask yeah. finish, yeah. the mm. first cider cask finish in Ooh, Scotland. Okay. And uh, some distilleries in Ireland are playing a lot with uh, different, the different finishes, finishes Tron, different types yeah. of oak. Yeah. Really yeah. cool so stuff. I think they've set it the path in the yeah. future for the new generation of whiskies, for the new experiments, for pushing the envelope, mm -hmm. getting back to the traditional styles, to the house styles. Yeah. Boom! Hitting the traditional with a little modern twist, and that's what we like. Uh, so, let's get down to scores. Oh, yeah, that's right. Apparently, the co-founder of uh, Alcoholic Anonymous, Mr. Bill Wilson, okay. demanded the whiskey on his deathbed mm -hmm. and was refused. Funny. Faith irony. Okay, faith irony. Okay, who's yep. first? Mr. David? So. So, I love this whiskey. It's really nice. It's an interesting, and I love the experiment side of it. For what is it, forty-three pounds? I think it's a, a great buy. I definitely recommend buying one. But missing a little bit of complexity and age. Wish it was a bit older. Um, I'm gonna give it eighty-three. Okay, interesting. Um, 
I really enjoyed this uh, whiskey. Uh, I wouldn't say it's my favorite from the experimental range. Uh, I mean, the winter song. Oh, Jesus. Let's not talk about it. Anyway, let's not talk about it. It's a different kettle of fish, for sure. Uh, I gave it an 89. I gave it a 4 on a blind test and 89 now. I really enjoyed it tonight. 88 from my side. Mm -hmm. I find it quite complex. Slight um, picket elements, sweet finish. Mm -hmm. Love what they uh, do with the packaging. And uh, yeah, actually, like it's that. funny because they were the first one who introduced packaging in the 60s. So uh, that's irony again as uh, they're trying to go back yeah, from I, that. Yep. So you just go with the flow. <laughs> Facts after faxes. Boys on fire today! Is fire, 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 fire and cane! Fire and cane! Fire and Shock cane! It. I'm a ninja! <laughs> <laughs> so, we told you a bit about us. Now we want to know about you. So hit us up with a comment. Tell us if you've tried fire and cane. What did you think of it? Did you like it? Did you dislike it? We want to know. Oh, cheers to you, fire and cane. And on that note, we're about chronicles and we're out. <laughs>